Good evening, Fight fans, and welcome to Team Combat League TV. Welcome to the beautiful Oceanside Revere in Revere, Massachusetts. And welcome to Week 4, Season 2 of the Team Combat League. Tonight, the Boston Butchers make their TCL debut against the DC Destroyers in what is a very unique concept. It's team boxing. If you're not used to it, if you're not familiar yet with what this means, each team has 24 fighters, and they fight one-round fights to determine who in the end has the most points and comes out the winner. It's a very brand-new, unique concept that's been brought into play. Last season was Season 1, and now we're into Season 2, where TCL has expanded from 8 to 12 teams. The Boston Butchers are one of those new expansion teams. They make their debut tonight. So much action in store. Michael Parenti bringing you all the action. I'm joined by my broadcast partner, Peter Welch of Welch's Boxing. Peter, you're someone who has been around this sport for a long time. Very traditional like I am. You're used to those 8-round, 10-round, 12-round championship fights. What do you think about the concept of a one-round fight? Well, it's action-packed. you got one round to make your mark. You're with your team. You know, you have to make a good impression. You have one round to do it. And it's going to be a lot of fireworks, a lot of action, really. It promises to be intense action from the opening bell. We have three rounds that this is broken down into, the launch rounds, the middle rounds, and then the money rounds in the end to close out the show. For a further explanation of the rules, we're going to send it to Dewey Cooper for a full explanation. Team Combat League is a new, exciting, professional boxing team sport. The fight format for Team Combat League guarantees explosiveness, adrenaline, and excitement. There is a 24-round competition between two teams from different cities, and each individual round is a new individual matchup. The first eight rounds are called the lunch rounds. We're lunching the competition off. The middle eight rounds are called the middle rounds, and the last eight rounds from round 17 through 24 are called the money rounds. Each round is scored individually, new matchups every round, and the team with the most points at the end of 24 rounds wins the fight. There's nothing more exciting than Team Combat League. So there it is, Dewey Cooper with an explanation of the rules and how this will all go down tonight for Team Combat League. And with that said, the Boston Butchers, as we mentioned, Peter, are making their TCL debut tonight. So many familiar faces in the New England region, many that you have worked with in the past. Who stands out to you tonight? Who are you keeping an eye ah, on? Ah, now you put me on the spot, right? <laughs> so it's a team. Uh, there's a ton of kids from the New England area. Uh, can't say enough about all of them, really. Fontenez, mm -hmm. Parella. Hogan, uh, Tevin, you know, f uh, you know, the list goes on and on. It's a lot of local kids. Uh, many of them come through my gym when we ran tournaments throughout the New England area, and uh, it's going to be a great one. And both rosters, we should mention, are completely stacked from top to bottom, both the D.C. Destroyers and the Boston Butchers. Our ringside correspondent, Ron Board, has had a chance to catch up with both head coaches and some of the fighters competing tonight. Let's send it over to Ron. Barry, as a, as a trainer, how difficult is it to prepare these fighters for this kind of event, whether they're used to fighting eight rounds, ten rounds, whatever, now they're going to fight three minutes, and then some guys will sit for a while and come back again. What's the difference from, from your perspective? Well, when it was first, when this concept was first brought to me, you know, and I was like so many other uh, trainers that I've been in the trenches with, uh, legendary trainers as well, um, I turned it down like three times, you know what I mean, be honest with you, because, you know, I was so used to traditional boxing, and I, 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 I had to kind of set back, you know, I spoke with my wife about it, and, and, and a good, very good friend of mine happened to be my attorney, and they said, well, just try it, you know what I mean, and, 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 and if it works, it works, if it don't, it don't, at least you can say you tried it. So what ultimately happened is uh, Mark, which is one of the owners, and uh, Ahmed, uh, spoke to them. Mark came down, he saw me, and we had an audition. After the audition, I was kind of sold on it because it was very, very exciting. Traditional boxing, sometimes, you know, let's be honest, it's like watching paint dry. <laughs> this type of boxing, you don't have a chance to as they say, chill, you got to get it. You got to get it within 15 to 20 seconds, make the adjustments, and then go because it's like a hot round. Sure. And I've watched seasoned veterans, people that fought for world titles, people that were world champions, come through this uh, league <laughs> and went to one round and thought it was going to be easy and gassed out in a half a round, right? <laughs> You know, but, you know, overall it was nonstop action. You know, you don't have a chance to go get no hot dogs or beer or 
go to the bathroom a lot of times because boom, it's over. Right. You know what I mean? And um, I, I, I really liked it. And who knows? You know, it could be looking at the evolution of boxing. What do you tell a counterpuncher if you, a guy comes to you and he's because it would seem to me there's not much time for counterpunching. I watched Austin Trout, which was a, which is an excellent counterpuncher. And, of course, was world champion in boxing. And um, I watched Trout his first time, his only time, in, uh, I believe we were in L.A. And, lo and behold, he went in there and put on a clinic against a kid that had fought through the tournament and that could fight. And he really didn't even get touched. You know what I mean? So I would say to any fighter that, you know, get into this thing, if you're a counter puncher, you know, if that guy's the bull, then you become the matador. You know what I mean? And just keep turning, keep boxing. Don't stop being who you are in the ring. You know what I mean? But just, you know, just know that that one round uh, resemble the 12th round or the 10th round in a 10 round of fight. Sure. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Barry. You're welcome. We're with uh, Mark Agaro, the coach of the Boston Butchers. This is a first event f uh, for you and your team. How do you sort of approach this going in because it's so different from conventional boxing? Um, we're kind of learning on the fly, so we have to take everything, you know, with a grain of salt as we go and kind of be flexible. You know, um, as we go, we'll obviously learn a lot this first time. But um, everybody's fought so many times, they know the basics of it. That's all we really need to focus on is do the basics, do them really well. And I think we'll, we'll, we'll do really well. Really you, you've got a couple fighters that are going to be fighting a round, then they're out for a while, then they're going to be fighting another round, uh, which is, I would think, pretty unusual for these guys. How do you approach those particular fighters and, and how they have to uh, not just check out after their their first three minutes? Right, so that's that's part of the strategy we talked about is how to prepare yourself, you know, get yourself mentally, physically ready to go to battle for three minutes. Pull yourself down a little bit, cool down, and then rev yourself back up. So that, that's part of the process. Like I said, we're going to learn on the fly a little bit. But I hope, you know, these guys have done it so much. We practice, so we've been practicing test matches to do it. So I think during the match, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be spot on. Is this, in your mind, a sort of uh, uh, attack mode boxing? You know, you, uh, I, I think of a guy like Floyd Mayweather would have a hard, <laughs> hard time here because the fight would be over. Yeah, you would think. I have my own thoughts and I really think our guys, our boxers, guys like Rashidi, guys who have speed, guys who can box and guys who can jab and counter punch are going to give anybody who gives pressure a hard time. I think we're going to get a couple of knockdowns off, off people who try to come at us too hard. Is it similar uh, in, in some ways to sort of the amateur boxing approach as opposed to professionally because you have so little time to score points? It's similar to a high level amateur match with the small gloves and no headgear, so you, you can't over. I, I don't think you can be overly aggressive. It's, it's. I don't think it's a good thing to be overly aggressive. We don't want those 10-8 rounds on our side, and we want them against them. One last thing, the money round. Obviously, those last eight fights. That's what everyone sort of looks forward to. Uh, that, and a lot of times, that's where these things are, are decided. What's your approach uh, going into that? And do you have to alter how, how you prepare these guys and talk to them if they're in the money round? Uh, we'll probably have a quick chat with them after uh, their first round and get them, you know, kind of get them situated depending on who they're going against, if they're rematching somebody or not. Um, but, uh, you know, the way I'm approaching it is we're going to be up the whole time and we're going to be ahead and we're not going to have to worry about doing anything out of, out of strategy and we're just going to do, we're going to go down the line and we're going to, you know, keep getting the 10-9 rounds. Great. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, thank Mark Agaro, Boston Butchers. On a more serious note, as we get ready for action tonight in week four, season two of TCL, Peter, as we know in boxing, one of the old sayings is that you don't play boxing. It's certainly not a game, and this is a very dangerous sport. And unfortunately, we saw some of the effects of that two weeks ago uh, in week two of this season when Miami Assassins fighter Artie Ndembo suffered an injury during his match and a knockout loss. Unfortunately, Artie is right now in a medically induced coma fighting for his life, and TCL is doing its best to support Artie and his family. Artie's family has started a GoFundMe account, which you can see on the screen right now. We urge you to donate as much as you can to help support Artie and his family. Team Combat League will match third-party donations up to $25,000 to help in this support, and the Boston Butchers and D.C. Destroyers have donated to this GoFundMe as well. So in hope that Artie makes a full, speedy recovery, we're going to do our best. We're going to make donations and hope to wish Artie a speedy recovery, hopefully to get back in the ring someday and just sustain life. But just a stark reminder that boxing, of course, is a serious sport. If you can give don generously and donate, we ask that you do. And our prayers not only for Team Combat League, the Boston Butchers, and the D.C. Destroyers are all with the Indemble family tonight.
for the fans watching around the world and right here in person, this is Team Combat League. I am joined by the president of TCL, Dewey Cooper, for a quick message here to the fans. Boston, we are here. We're excited. Team Combat League has finally made it to Massachusetts here in Boston. Guys, we thank each and every one of you that are here. We greatly appreciate you. And guess what? This is a monumental night for Team Combat League because this is officially our first ever sellout audience. So thank you guys for all coming. Yes, sir. The DC Destroyers are a team from the first season. They're a very talented group of boxers. This is the, the, de the debut of the, the Boston Butchers. So I want all you guys to give them your energy, your love, and your strength for the battle tonight. We appreciate you all. Thank you very much, Team Combat League Boston. We here. President of TCL, Dewey Cooper, when we brought a team here to Boston, I told them it was the city of champions. And we are delivering it here tonight with a sellout audience. So thank you, everybody, for being here and for tuning in at home on TeamCombatLeague.tv. What do you say? Let's get the action going here. And welcome to the stage, the DC Destroyer. Ladies and gentlemen, now let's welcome the
gentlemen, before we get started here, please welcome to sing the national anthem, El Leon. Tonight's colors and flag presentation brought to you by the Boston Fire Honor Guard. All right, you guys, join me with the national anthem. Moment of silence. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air That our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star's bangled banner yet wave for the Ladies and gentlemen, El Leon. And thank you to the Boston Fire Honor Guard. All right, fight fans here in Revere, Massachusetts and around the world, it's time to get started. Boston versus the DC Destroyers. Let's meet the starting lineup here in the launch rounds. First for the heavyweights, fighting out of the DC Destroyers, Jacob Branch. And his opponent on the Boston Butchers, Tim Hatfield. Then in the light heavyweight division from the DC Destroyers, Alantes Fox. And his opponent from the Boston Butchers, Francis Hogan. Also in the light heavyweight division from the DC Destroyers, Demetrius Ballard. And his opponent from the Boston Butchers, Thomas O'Toole. In the middleweight division from the DC Destroyers, David Grayton. And his opponent from the Boston Butchers, Rashidi In the female welterweight division from the DC Destroyers, Natalie Brown. And her opponent from the Boston Butchers, Amelia Moore. In the lightweight division from the DC Destroyers, Kobia Breedy. And his opponent from the Boston Butchers, Alejandro Paulino. In the female featherweight division from the DC Destroyers, Jennifer Miranda. 
her opponent from the Boston Butchers, Melanie Costa! And tonight's first bout in the featherweight division from the DC Destroyers, Amadazi Jalili! And his opponent from the Boston Butchers, Irvin Gonzalez! Here we go, round number one. Fight one of 24 underway. Michael Parenti joined by Peter Welch on Team Combat TV. And here we are in week four, season two of TCL, the Boston Butchers oh. and the Destroyers. And speaking of destroyed, Irvin Gonzalez oh. scores a quick knockdown against Amazadi Jalili. Jalili born and raised in Afghanistan. Coming in here, this is his first fight in the United States and first fight of record that I can find anywhere. Gonzalez, a seasoned pro from Worcester, Mass, with 20 pro fights under his belt. He's teeing off again, Bronzo. and that is going to do it. Oh. A huge knockout for Irving Gonzalez in fight number one, and that's going to give the Destroyers, or rather the Butchers, a quick 10-7 lead right out the gate. Jalili is down and out. What an impressive showing by Irvin Gonzalez, the Worcester Mass native. And, and, and Peter, this is a fighter with 12 knockouts on his resume against, what, from what we gather, a very inexperienced opponent in his show here tonight. Yeah, it looked like Jalili didn't have what it took to, to go up against Gonzalez, and, you know, it really showed. I mean, we, we didn't have much on Jalili in no. the first place, and that just proved the point that there really wasn't anything. Now, Jalili was not scheduled to fight again tonight, so there's no case of a possible forfeit or replacement opponent, whether that's in the middle rounds or the money rounds. But here in the launch rounds, you want to talk about launching the debut of the Butchers. Here's a look at the replay here. Absolutely. Great start. Great start. That big right hook. The first clean. time down, left hook the second time, and that's what ended yeah, it. So it was clean. He was out. Once again, based on the rules, as Dewey Cooper explained to us uh, during the pre-show broadcast, this goes down now as a 10-7 round and a 10-7 victory for the Butchers. That's a great way to start it out. You start building up some points like that, it makes it very hard for the Destroyers to catch up in the end. But in any event, we hope Jalili's okay. He's yeah, hard to recover speed. from that. He catches yeah. him clean on the chin like that. He ain't coming back. Now he's got a 90-day sub suspension after that. It's going to be a that. while before you see Jalili again for the next Destroyers matchup. So likely he is not going to be in there the next time the Destroyers get in the ring. But Irving Gonzalez with a big, big victory tonight to kick off the debut wow, of the great. Boston Butchers. A great showing. Uh, and again, we mentioned that for Gonzalez, 20-fight veteran. 27 years of age, just came in there and I think really showed that experience tonight. Yeah, I want to see him in round two. We'd love to see more of Irving Gonzalez, and uh, unfortunately tonight he's not matched up a second time on this card. So he's going to get a nice break. Came in here for about 30 seconds of work, and hey, he gets to go home and uh, call it a night. Great job, guy. Gonzalez. Looking forward to seeing more from him. So now we move on to bout number two here with the female featherweight division, Melanie Costa of the Boston Butchers fighting out of Norton, Massachusetts. The female featherweight division from the D.C. Destroyers, the action Jennifer going. Miranda. Nice. And for the Boston Butchers, Melanie Costa. Pat Sullivan on the call. Jennifer Miranda, born in Spain, now resides in the D.C. area. 
Very experienced fighter, 10-1 and one as a pro boxer. She's 5-5 five and five lifetime with TCL, so she split her 10 matchups last year in Season 1. Uh, coming off a big win January in Spain, she returned to her home country. Hasn't fought in the TCL format since last August, but she's a former two-time WBA Intercontinental Champion an 11-time national champion. So you talk about Melanie Costa, also a decorated amateur in her time, made her pro debut earlier this year. What's she, like 15, 15 fights as a pro? Miranda has 11 fights as a pro. Melanie Costa, only three. Okay, so that's an amateur record. Both very experienced as amateurs, however, Peter. Costa making a strong push. Much, much taller opponent in Miranda. The size difference is a contrast. Costa's going to try to go to the body set things up and of course Miranda's going to try to stay on the outside and pick her apart. You know Peter we talk about taller fighters allegedly having that <clears throat> advantage but it's not much of a height advantage if you don't actually use it. Got to use it. She seems to be setting those uppercuts looking to set up the uppercuts and mm -hmm. finish with the hook. Always a good way to stop a hard charging opponent with that uppercut. We've seen it work wonders in the past with a taller fighter. Miranda again very experienced. She's getting away with keeping her hands low. She's staying far enough away but Look for Costa to close distance and catch it with an overhand. Costa, during the day, is a police officer for the Norton Police Department. They nicknamed her the Pitbull. And you kind of see that Pitbull fighting style. She likes to get on the inside, which, you, as you mentioned, you have to do against a taller opponent. Yeah, when you get that size difference, you've got to go to the body first, work your way in. Halfway through this round, this is fight two of 24. Costa and Miranda. She didn't have much luck closing distance. Miranda was picking her apart on the way in, so now she's staying on the outside. Which isn't going to work because you see Miranda's throwing that uppercut. Just controlling that distance with the jab. You know, again, Peter, we talk about this concept of having only three minutes to get that victory. And who it could favor, right? And yeah. I feel like it could favor both type of fighters, whether you're a fast starter or a slow starter who likes to set the pace. There's a possibility for either side to win a fight like this and win this round. With a mismatch in size like this. Costa has to have that power punch to make a difference. I think Miranda's going to control it. It's going to be over before you know it. Final 45 seconds here. Costa trying to work away in. Costa needs a knockout mm. or a knockdown to win the round. And so far, Miranda's showing that experience and that height advantage, as we mentioned. Five foot six. I'd like to see more of that from the pit bull. Steady pace and stay on her. Can't give her that distance. Can't give her time to set up and be relaxed. Basically got to smother her. <laughs> the final 15 seconds here for Costa to try to keep the butcher's success going. Miranda doesn't seem all that impressed. <laughs> very, <laughs> Look on her face. <laughs> very slick. She's got everything under control. And she's been around a long time. And there's the bell. So that round in the books. Looking like it went in the favor of Miranda. Peter, what did you see from Miranda that allowed her to control the pace? Just the jab, setting everything up long, the distance, the, that right uppercut. And when you can control that distance like that, you know, there's not much your opponent can do against you. Look at some of the action here. Let's welcome to the ring the next two contestants from the D.C. Destroyers, Colby Abridi, and for the Boston Butchers, Alejandro Paulino. So we'll get the score momentarily, but right now we're ready for bout number three. This one I'm really looking forward to. Alejandro Paulino, who's made a fast climb in the pro ranks against Kobe Abridi, who has been around a little bit longer as a pro, fighting out of Maryland, born in Barbados. Abridi is part of that stable of fighters from Barbados who've trained under Barry Hunter, who've relocated to this neck of the woods, and, and, and Barry Hunter just has that pipeline of bringing in this great international talent, Kobe Abridi being one of them. He's 15-1 and one as a pro, coming off his only loss, which was in his last pro fight in 2021, and last year was 8-4 and four with TCL, so he's very accustomed to this format. Don't blink on this one. No. Man. Now, Alejandro Polino yeah, as a pro. Last round was scored 10-9 in favor of the D.C. Destroyers. And there it is, the 10-9 round for the Destroyers. So they creep the back into the slowly. The current score is 19-17 for Boston. Polino, as we mentioned, as a pro is 17-0 despite being just 25 years of age but has 13 knockouts on his resume. So you're looking at a seasoned veteran in Breedy and Paulino, the young up-and-comer, both hard hitters. Oh, and you're seeing that action early on here. No, no pace establishing no, here. going right at it. 
And this is what we like to see. This is what this format promises. Both guys slugging it out here. I will say about Paulino, I've had an opportunity to call a lot of his fights with CES Boxing, and his defense has come into question. Breedy's he's had banging. some fights, and he's coming. And I think Breedy, is, Breedy knows that, and he's coming after him. Paulino caught him with something there. Polino has hit the canvas a couple of times in his pro career, but has bounced back nicely and has passed each test swimmingly to be at 17-0. But this being his first TCL fight against the more seasoned Breedy, who has 12 fights in this format. And these guys are going at it, Peter. They're going at it. They're banging. It's going to be a very difficult round to score if you're one of the ringside judges. They're looking for the knockout. Yeah. Knockdown or knockout gives you that automatic edge. Of course, the knockout, if it's Kobe or Breedy, puts the... Destroyers out in front. I'd like to see a little head movement from Polino, who's taking those shots pretty clean. And that's been one of the problems in his pro career. Oh, as, as his, yeah, yeah, he did. Too. As he, his uh, level of competition has progressed, we've seen some of those challenges and struggles. And Breedy's been around for I a long he time. Wobbled, he wobbled Breedy a little bit. With that I think so. Cut. Look for that uppercut from Polino right there. There it is. Uppercut I again. Halfway through this round, Michael Parenti and Peter Welch bringing you all the action here. There it is again. And this is a finish with that right uppercut left hook could be good. It's a perfect thumbnail of what to expect in TCL, this kind of round right here. And you hope to see more of it. These guys are going at it, wasting no time. Nice left hook there by Breedy. And here comes Paulino again. we got a minute left. I think Paulino got a little bit of an edge. He's got something left. Breedy might be fading a little bit. And this is a format, Peter, where you can empty the tank. Those final 45, 30 seconds possibly steal a close round. Is that uppercut again? Now, Paulino is scheduled to fight again mm -hmm. later on in the night, so. Oh. These two are going at it. Final 30 seconds of Reedy's fight number dangerous. three. He very much is. And you know it only takes one punch to turn that entire round around like to see Leo getting in there, breaking them up so that they can bang, so they're not wrestling. It's currently 19-17 in favor of the Butchers. This is a very close round. I like how Polino's starting at the body. Changing levels on Breedy. Oh! Breedy's got a good chin. He's oh! taking some clean shots. Some lefts and rights there, right before the bell wow. by Polino. Nice wow. way to close. That's a wow. great fight, Peter. He wobbled him there. I think Polino gets that. Wow. And I think those final maybe 25, 30 seconds may have helped that seal was, it for Polino. That was the difference there, Mike. You're right. Take a look at the replay here from fight three of our launch rounds. Good movement on Polino's part, stepping over. Polino and Breedy deliver in our third fight. Finding a home for that uppercut now, finishing with the hook. That was the difference, right? You heard him with that hook. Absolutely. He left him wobbling, stepping in potholes as he left the ring. <laughs> now our fight four combatants step into the ring, back to the female welterweight division. Natalie Welcome Brown and Amelia ring, Moore. next contestant from the DC Destroyers, Natalie Brown. And for the Boston Butchers, Amelia Moore. The Amelia. judges have tallied the last round. Boston has won that round 10 to 9 and now lead 20. For the Butchers, 10 9 on the scorecard in favor of Paulino to keep the Butchers out in front 29 26. Amelia Moore for the Butchers now taking on Natalie Brown. Amelia Moore is in an interesting story 34 years of age, fighting out of Middletown, Connecticut. Highly decorated amateur, spent two years in the U.S. Naval Academy, multiple national championships, also was a U.S. Olympic alternate in 2020, so very seasoned as an amateur. And tough sledding for yes. her against Natalie Brown. Natalie Brown, 45 years of age, making her TCL debut for the Destroyers, has not fought since 2018. So a contrast in experience, a contrast in, in layoff and in activity here between these two fighters. Yeah, Moore is quite a prospect. Got a ton of experience. And I think she just caught her with a right hand there. So. Wobbled her. Amelia Moore may be smelling blood here in these final two minutes of this round. And if you're streaming at home, it doesn't give you much time to it go really get a doesn't. beer. It really doesn't. Get your snacks before the, next, the, the middle rounds. 
We take a small break after the first eight fights, and we go on to the next eight, and then so on and so forth for the final eight, which are the money rounds. But right now, Amelia Moore trying to bring it to Natalie Brown. Nice. He's really putting it together nice. Butchers have a nice little comfortable edge here, 29-26 over the Destroyers, and you just want to keep racking up points here for the Butchers. doesn't keep matter how you do away. it. Yeah. Keep chipping away. That was a good swing fight there for Paulino to get it back in favor of the Butchers after the Destroyers had the 10-9 round in the second fight. That was the best one yet. Yes, absolutely. There comes more good. applying some pressure, Peter. Good finish with the left. She's dropping into the body, finishing up top. Nice. Constant pressure. Moore's just putting that constant pressure, stepping, stepping forward, walking her down, forcing Brown to the ropes. Final minute here. Moore trying to nail it home. Had a very solid round thus far. It's worth mentioning as a pro, Natalie Brown had a 7-3 record. Yeah, she, she, you know, she puts it together nice, but she's just not keeping up with the pace that Moore's putting on. Correct. Moore just a little bit faster. She's younger, a little more speed. Seems to be beating more to the uh, ground right. of the punch. She's forcing the action. Mm -hmm. You know, she's stepping forward, forcing that pace. Final you know, 30 seconds of fight four. It's interesting because, I mean, in a, re a regular four or six round fight, you'd be looking to start sure. off feeling the guy out, but you can't do that. You don't have that luxury. It, it really does. This format really eliminates the feeling out round. As we saw in those in that last play with Breedy and Paulino. And now Moore picking it up here in the final 10 seconds. Just trying to put an exclamation point on this one. Big finish here. 10 seconds for Moore. Yes. And there's the bell. Strong round for Amelia Moore. And by all accounts, I think she got the W here in this one. Yeah, and I think she did enough to win that one, Mike. Should be another 10-9 in favor of the Butchers as they start to pull away a little bit halfway through the launch round. So good start for Boston. Couldn't ask for anything much better. Here are the replays from this last bout. And more just a real, just a step faster, Peter. Yeah, yeah. She jumped on her. You know, she got that pace going fast and kept it going. That's the thing. If you could get the jump on the guy and mug him, keep it going. Maybe you catch him and just keep the, the momentum going. The Win that round. David Grayton. Highly and anticipated. Butchers, Rashidi Ellis. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to this one as well. The middleweight division. We have Rashidi Ellis from the Butchers. But fans, that last round was scored 10 Speedy to 9 Rashidi. for your winner, Boston. The cumulative score is now 39 to 35 in favor of the Boston Butchers. So as expected, Amelia Moore gets the 10-9 round. The Butchers now well out in front here, 39-35. But hey, listen, as you know, all it takes is one knockout or, or two knockdowns, and that 10-7 round in favor of the other way cuts that lead almost entirely gone at that point. So you cannot rest on the laurels here, even if you have a nice little cushion. These guys, Mike, they love it. They're yeah. looking at it. They're smiling. They're chomping at the bit. They're going to come right at each other. Rashidi Ellis, veteran of 25 pro fights against David Grayton. 18 pro fights under his belt. Grayton was a member of the Destroyers last year. Had a 2-3 and three record in TCL combat. He's a southpaw. 36 years of age. Rashidi Ellis just turned 30. So great experience here on both sides. A very well-matched bout here. Speedy L is trying to show off some of that speed early. Little tactical game going on here. Oh. Some dirty boxing here. These guys are getting tied up early. Little headbutt. Looks like a little headbutt. I think he's bleeding. I think Rashidi might have a little cut over his eye. Something to keep in mind, too, Peter, as we watch this broadcast. A lot of these fighters are fighting heavier than they typically would in this format. As Ellis picks up the pace here. Caught him with some clean shots. Now, both of these guys really can't paint as welterweights in their career. So, fighting at a middleweight limit. And down goes Grayton. With the right hand. That's a big turn of events for the Butchers, who are looking to pad their yeah. lead. Let's and go. now you're, you're staring at a 10-8 round for Rashidi Ellis. And that's just kind of wide in the gap. So nice great job by Ellis. Set up. Yeah. That's another knockdown there. That's a knockdown. No? No, I'm surprised. That would have been a 10-7 if there were two knockdowns. So Jerry let him go. Let him go there. Doesn't get the 10-7 yet. But a lot of time for Ellis. 90 seconds to be exact, mm -hmm. Peter. Ellis just ate a hook there. 
Green, he's just, on yeah, he's just trying to action. fight out of trouble here, yeah. Good pressure. He's keeping the pressure on, stepping him down. Tremendous action in these launch rounds on TeamCombatLeague.tv. We thank you for joining us. Michael Parenti and Peter Welch again bringing you all the action here. Rashidi's mixing it up. Body, head, head, body. I love the way, yeah, he changes levels so swiftly. Keeping him on the ropes. If you're great and you just really want to survive this round, not get that 10-7. It's already going to be a 10-8, but you don't want to lose that extra point in the process. I'd like to see Rashidi force it a little bit like he did in the beginning of the you know, the first minute. It's kind of coasting. And you wonder, in the back of their minds, the fighter says, hey, I got the 10-8 round. Let yeah. me just ride yeah. this out. Don't do anything too crazy. Right. And so that that's one of the other sides of this platform and what it presents. Right. Tactics. A lot of uh, strategizing, if you, you will. You, you do have a team to consider when you're in there. Very much unlike anything we've seen in pro boxing, this team combat league, team format. Final 10 seconds here of this fifth fight. And Ellis scores a second knockdown. knockdown. That's huge yep. in the final Another 10 seconds. Knockdown. That was a hook. And the bell's going to ring, and Ellis is going to have a 10-7 round in the bank. Could, could be argued of a, of a slip, sure. but, but that was a clean contact, and he did go down. So, Well, and perhaps makes up for the what we thought was a knockdown exactly. earlier in the second exactly. time. And now Ellis hammers it home. So a big, wow. big round for Rashidi Ellis, who is now going to have the 10-7 in his pocket for the Butchers, who are now really starting to pull away here. And, and you got to love it to you people back home watching nonstop action. Absolutely. These guys just keep lining up. I can't keep up with it. i got to <laughs> take a break myself. So the Boston Butchers... Widening their lead in that last bout. Now in the ring, the next combatant in the light heavyweight division from the DC Destroyers, Demetrius Ballard, and from the Boston Butchers, Thomas O'Toole. Fans, that last round, round number five, was scored 10 to 7 in favor of the Boston Butchers. Fans, when there are two knockdowns in a round, it is considered an immediate knockout and a 10 to 7 round. The cumulative score so far. Boston, 49, D.C., 42. So there it is, 49-42 now in favor of the Butchers over the Destroyers. Thomas O'Toole from the Destroyers now lining up against, I'm sorry, from the Butchers lining up against Demetrius Ballard of the D.C. Destroyers. So now the Butchers are in a pretty good position here, Pat, uh, uh, Peter. They're up seven points. you got to wonder if strategy from the coaches is coming mm -hmm. into play now. You know, Thomas Toole, he's long, he's a lefty. Might pose a little bit of a problem sure. for Ballard. 26-year-old Southpaw from Ireland now has relocated to Boston and fighting under Mark DeLuca, longtime pro here in the Boston area. He was here, I saw him as a kid, 2011. Hmm. They brought a team over from Ireland, and it was a big group of kids. And he's all grown up now fighting wow. as a pro. And he looks great. 9-0 is a pro, by the way, with six knockouts, so keep that power in the back of your mind. Demetrius Ballard... Far more experience as a pro, 31 years of age. He's 21-2-1 in his professional career. Last fought in June of 2023, he suffered a loss to Shane Mosley Jr. That's a familiar name. Yeah, and yeah. This is his uh, TCL debut with the Destroyers. And you talked about the strategy, Peter. At some point, the Destroyers have to get a little desperate. They, right. they need some knockouts or two knockdown rounds to really get back into this. And you can chip away slowly, but... If the Butchers continue oh, to pile up rounds, a not a knockdown there, it's a slip. But oh, if the Butchers slip. continue to even pile up just 10, 9 rounds, four or five more of those, and it really starts to widen that gap, right. then the Destroyers have to change their strategy. You've got to wonder what Barry has in the back, mm -hmm. you know, if he's got some secret weapons back there. Man, he may need some power punches in some of these middle and money rounds as we get down the stretch. But be that as it may, we're in fight number six. More than halfway done with the launch rounds. The Butchers having a great start in their TCL debut here at the Oceanside Revere. You know, to these kids, this is everything. Yeah. You know, it's not going on their record. They're still able to fight, you know, any other fight cards that they planned on for the rest of the year. This is just like an extra opportunity to get exposure for them. I love the idea of this for the kids. Final minute. Been a pretty close round so far, Peter. This has been close. Nobody's really established any sort of presence yet, and there's a little takedown. Take 
I, I think I think Tom could have an advantage if he presses it a little yeah. bit. He's just kind of laying back on that that long god. Well, this is where if you're a Ballard and you're the destroyers, you want Ballard to really turn it on here. Right. You can steal this round he in the last 30 seconds, it. right? He could steal it because he's looking like he's got to do something a little yeah. desperate to score. And you want to get and the destroyers want to get back in this. They need a, a win desperately here before this starts to really get out of control. And so it'll be very interesting to see here. We've got 10 seconds to go, and I really don't have a feel for how this round went. But that's why we don't get paid to judge, and, and thankfully we just get paid to call it as we see it. Yeah. I think Thomas did enough in my eyes to win the round. All right, there's the bell. So fight number six in the books between Thomas O'Toole and Demetrius Ballard in the light heavyweight division. And we'll find out how the judges call it. But again, a very important swing round as the destroyers continue to get further behind. They need every point they can get. Take a look back here at some of the action, Peter. There was a slip earlier in the round. Hit behind the, the next head fight there. in the ring. In the he's tripping over his feet. From the DC Destroyers, Alantes Fox. And from the left. Boston Butchers, Francis Hogan. It's Thomas Tool. Big round six was scored 10 9 in favor of Boston. For a cumulative score of 59 to 51, Boston. Oh, Peter, you called it. Thomas O'Toole did just enough to win round six, and the Butchers continue to extend their lead now 59 to 51 as we get to the end of the launch rounds. Francis Hogan, Frank the Tank from the Boston Butchers, light heavyweight from nearby Weymouth, Mass., taking on Alantes Fox, a very seasoned pro. Alantes Fox is 28 6 and 1, fighting out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Two and another, one last year with TCL. Another lefty from Boston. Francis got his start down at my gym. It's yeah. healthy back in the days. And you know a lot about that punching power that Hogan has. He's grown up to be quite a fighter. Yeah. 16 and 0 right now in his pro career. Has 14 wins by knockout. Very tricky southpaw. Both guys very tall and lanky. Alantes Fox, many of you may remember him from 2017 when he went the distance with Demetrius Andre, really one of the more notable fights of his career. So he's been around a long time, very durable, very sturdy veteran. A tough challenge for Hogan here. Big, I know Francis and, and is a big kid, but he's... He's very big. Yeah, I mean, Fox has that size advantage. He looks like, I mean, he looks more like a light heavyweight than Francis Hogan does, he even does. though they're competing in light heavyweight. But Hogan typically really, you know, started out as a middleweight, now more or less campaigning at 68. So this is a, a leap up in size for him. And they're going at it. Yeah. Fox looks pretty good early on here, putting together some combinations. Now what does Hogan have to do here to close this gap, Peter? No, he's got to come forward, drop into the body, and finish up top. I think if, he's can, if he can just drop in, shoot that straight left hand in, finish with the right hook up top. You know, Fox is one of the more accomplished fighters on this Destroyers roster. They're really leaning on him to get a round back yeah, for him. It's been yeah. a long time since they've won. They haven't won a round since round two. They've dropped the last four, and, and it's allowed the Butchers to pull away a little bit, including two 10-7 rounds during this launch round process. So right now it's 59-51. Fox looking pretty good here. It's a good shot for Fox in this final minute to maybe put an exclamation point on this round and slowly get the Destroyers back well, into it. Hogan's banging right back. He's yeah. doing everything he can to stay in it. Now oh. it looks like he's pressing forward a little bit. There we go, dropping into the body. There it is. That's he's what you called for, yeah. Hogan's a local iron worker in Weymouth. More than 100 amateur fights before he turned pro. Lost a ton of them and said he learned so much from that process. And as you said, really has grown into a, 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 an elite pro at this point. Yeah, he's traveled around with his family yeah. and fought and all over the country. Final 30 seconds here of round seven. Hogan and Fox. Fox trying to get a point back for the Destroyers. It's been a while since they've scored one. And that was Jennifer Miranda in fight two against Melanie Costa. Fox doing some good work here with Hogan against the ropes. And this is a big step up for Hogan. I mean, if this were a eight, ten round fight, this would be a real tough battle right. against a veteran like Fox. And there is the bell. So, good round for Fox. I, I think he gets the slight edge there yeah. and, and is probably going to get that point back for the Destroyers. Yeah, you might see that size difference was, yeah. was an edge for Fox. 
That's the takedown from our last fight with Thomas O'Toole. And here's some of the action from Hogan and Fox. Fox is really adept at getting out of the way, putting some combinations to together. The last bout of the lunch rounds from the DC Destroyers, Jacob Branch, and from the Boston Butchers, Tim Hatfield. The scores are in from round number seven. The judges score that 10 to nine in favor of the DC Destroyers. Total score currently 68 to 61 in favor of the Boston Butchers. He called it, Mike. Yep, as expected, Alantez Fox gets the W there for the Destroyers. So it's now 68-61, Butchers still in front. And now we move on to the final round of our launch rounds. Timothy Hatfield, the heavyweight, former college football standout at Brown University, taking on Jacob Branch, who is making his TCL debut or pro debut in any form. Another one of those fighters um, that Barry Hunter has brought in, relative unknown on this circuit, but a big, strong heavyweight nonetheless, and he's going to try to bring it to Timothy Hatfield. Hatfield has not fought in any capacity since March of 2022 when he suffered his first career loss to Quentin Sumter in Rhode Island. So this is a way back for him. Get back it in is. there. And Hatfield was a very accomplished high school and college football player, heavily recruited out of high school in Colorado, where he was born and raised. Moved to Rhode Island to attend Brown University. Oh, wow. Had a great football career and decided he wanted to get into boxing. And he's actually a prospective medical school student as well. Wow. Which I wonder, why do you want to do this? That's impressive. <laughs> Go be a doctor. He's, he's However, a, Hatfield, you know, he has that bug for it. He's Peter. a fan of the Klitschko brothers. Yeah. This is probably the closest we've had to any feeling out, really, in any of these fights. This first minute and a half here. Still anybody's round. Yeah, it's with the heavyweights you like. You're waiting for that KO. <laughs> and if you're Hatfield, you'd love to close it out on a positive note for the Butchers. And if you're the Destroyers and you're Jacob Branch, you get another point back. Get a little momentum yeah. going into that break between the launch and the middle rounds. It's far from over. Even <clears> though the Butchers <throat> have that seven-point lead, it's still far from over. You can erase that in three rounds. So it's still anybody's contest. And still anybody's round here in round number eight. Hatfield and Branch still seemingly trying to get their timing down, Peter. You know, I'm a hometown boy, but Branch has a little bit of an edge. I yeah. think he's looking to land that right hand, just going to set it up. But Hatfield's doing good with the jab. He's keeping him off with the jab, keeping him honest. You know, it's one of those formats, Peter, where you don't have a lot of time to... <clears throat> Search YouTube for a fight video and, and, and really learn a lot about your opponent. Right. It's just kind of a three-minute crash course once that bell rings. Branch trying to be more of an aggressor here, yeah, Peter. Yeah, the corner's calling him in. They're telling him to come forward yeah. and put the pressure on him. So his corner's giving him good advice. It's a good time to start doing that. Final 25 seconds or so of this eighth round. And if the Destroyers can pick this one up, Gives him a little momentum going into the middle rounds. Good exchange there from yeah. Hatfield. I like to see Hatfield move his head a little bit when he's done punching because he's just getting yeah. More out of the way with stationary all Stationary target at times. Oh. We want to remind everybody, as this round comes to a close, if you are watching us for free on YouTube and you want to see the rest of this action, log on to TeamCombatLeague.tv. Purchase a Brawl Pass to continue watching all tonight's action. So our first eight rounds on YouTube for free are in the books. You've got to pay to play if you want to see the rest of it. So hopefully on TeamCombatLeague.tv, you join us for the rest of the night. Peter Welch and Michael Parenti, we'd love to have you in our corner throughout. What a great start to this contest. We find out who won this eighth and final round of the launch rounds. Do I make a prediction, Mike, on that one? Sure. Yeah, I think DC. DC edged them I out. I think so, too. I think they got a little momentum. DC. To fight, to die, oh And this is my game to play To claim a brand new name, oh And I ain't gonna lie to you I'm a bit nervous that I might screw
screw everything up that I've ever done But what's the point of living if you ain't having fun? I guess I'll try this, try that, my miss Gotta find what I'm good at I guess I look here, look there, over where Am I scared, where am I at? I gotta make it in this life Whatever makes me happy, know I'm doing things right Sipping in the summer on a goose and Sprite Or find a nightclub for the end of the night